Last time we built a Threadripper rig with Radeon W7800 and Kingston SSDs. Got to boot it Windows, then realized it was only a warm up. It worked, but I'd say it was not really ideal. Now I've spent a bit more time taking it a step further, setting up as an enterprise ready AI server to squeeze out more performance, improve efficiency, and really start optimizing the workflow while planning for the future. Let me share with you the current state of things. Meet Ripper, the latest addition to my Proxmox cluster. So what we've done here is essentially a multi-VM AI platform running on Proxmox. The idea is to have one environment for NVIDIA CUDA workloads and another for AMD Rockham testing, all on the same machine. I wanted to set up full GPU pass-through and based on my research and also experience, I decided to split the cards into their own VMs rather than keeping it all in one place. And I have a lot more to say about that a bit later on. You might ask, why Proxmox? Well, I'm reasonably familiar with it, but also messing around with the virtual machines and different configurations that can and did break is another good reason to virtualize. Along the way, I tend to either create backups or snapshots to save the progress in case I go ahead and break things, which I did. Also with the likes of Proxmox, there is a lot of information online, which in turn means most AI tools like ChatGPT are well trained to help support troubleshooting the system. It might be a little bit ironic that I used LLM to help me set up a system to run LLM, but hey, welcome to the future. One of the things I figured out for multi-VM use is shared storage setup. Both VMs have access to the same drive via VirtualFS, which means single download is instantly available to both. This is especially useful when you're dealing with large models that take up a lot of storage, and downloading them once is far more convenient, even with fast internet connection. The beauty of VirtualFS compared to the network shares is that it essentially shares the drive from the host to both VMs with minimal latency and without the TCP IP stack overhead. In AI workloads where I'm constantly loading models back and forth, this makes a noticeable difference in performance. Networking wise, I kept to the standard setup I already have in my home lab, which is splitting host and VMs into VLANs for more granular control, and then using my firewall to manage the guardrails. Even so, networking was the first headache. Both VMs booted up with no network, only with loopback interface. Turns out the wildcard configuration in that plan wasn't playing nice. Switching to clean config with proper permissions fixed that. Then there was the AMD driver setup. Rockham just wouldn't detect the GPU at first. The issue, a leftover QXL virtual GPU in a VM config and secure boot messing with the drivers. Once we disabled both and rebuilt the DKMS modules, everything loaded cleanly. This took multiple hours of back and forth troubleshooting though. Lastly, the Virtual FS storage setup. I wasted an hour troubleshooting mounts before realizing I'd skipped creating the mapping in the Proxmox GUI first. Once that was sorted, the shared model storage worked perfectly. Now that both VMs are stable, let's put them to work and see what kind of performance we're getting. Let's jump to the PC and I'll guide you through it. For demonstration, I set up both VMs with Olama, which works great together with Open Web UI, as you can see here. So we'll just open up a new chat. I set it all up on the NVIDIA machine while keeping AMD machine connected via the network. The cool thing about this setup is that I have both machines accessing the same model files, but within Open Web UI, they're not getting confused or messed up. So you can actually see what I've done is I've got the local and external files. And what I actually did to make it easier for myself is I separated out, out using tags into AMD and NVIDIA. It's same files, but at least I can tell which one's which. So when I select a model, so let's go new chat. And we've got ChatGPT, so GPT OSS, the 20 billion model. So what I can do is the AMD version. So it's really highlighted. And then I can actually add an additional one within uh, Open Web UI, and I can run both at the same time. So now I'm going to select NVIDIA and have the same model. So as you can see, GPT OSS 20 billion. We'll throw in a quick prompt inside and see how the performance will fare. Let's just dump it in. And what we'll do is just run them side by side. We need to give it a second for it to load and run through. Both are now done. On the right hand side, we have NVIDIA at 118 tokens per second, and the total tokens was 2.7 thousand. On the left hand side, we've got the AMD card, 
and here we've got 67 tokens per second with two and a half thousand tokens total. For normal AI use, this might be useful to actually run multiple of the same query to see which one you prefer, which one's more valuable. Um, in this example, I'm just more using it for benchmarking and see what the performance will be like. Let's do another chat. And in here, for, let's select something smaller. So let's do Quen2. And we'll do Quen2 on both of them with the 7 billion model. Just throw another prompt. And they're complete. On the right hand side, we have 131 from NVIDIA and we've got around 68 from AMD. As you can see, AMD is about half the speed, uh, but it's also less power and we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, let's just run a slightly larger model. So we'll go one more chat. Let's pick up the DeepSeek R1. Uh, this model on the other hand does take a little while to load. So when we throw a prompt in, it just goes on for a little while. While this is generating, I want to raise another item. Since this is generative AI and is creating content based on you know, the models and information that's been provided, its actual performance is not always like for like, meaning that if you run one of the tests multiple times, you might actually have slightly different results. They're not going to be vastly different between uh, runs, but they'll be slightly different. Um, there'll definitely be a difference between running it the first time and uh, following times because in the beginning you need to load up the model. So let's see. So this is a larger model doing a larger task and it was at 31 tokens per second with around 2,000 tokens total. AMD's one is still going but as you can see it's going a little bit slower. Uh, it's almost half so it's about 15 tokens per second and one and a half thousand tokens. But as you can see down below, it says approximate total is around 1 minute and 49 seconds. So if I just regenerated this and try again, I'll do it on both. Because the model's already been loaded into memory, this will actually run slightly faster. And with smaller models, it actually runs considerably faster. And that gave me an idea. I've spent a considerable amount of time testing and playing around with these, and I thought, why don't I use the AI to create myself an agent or actually a tool so I can benchmark these cards better in a more consistent way? Plus, look at metrics. So what I did is I first tried to create a script that would consistently track performance while monitoring power and other metrics. And it worked for a bit, but ultimately it was a bit of a pain to use. And as I'm not really a programming professional, it wasn't really for me. And then I had an idea, why don't I just create a web page which would just run this for me? Uh, so I used AI to essentially help me code a page together. It took a little while and I had to do a lot of different versions of it until I was pretty happy with what I want. Since I had an idea in my head of what my output should be, it was a little bit easier to run and kind of do the iterative progression on this. But I did actually manage to create something and I'll show you that in a second. Let's just quickly see the results here. So it was around one and a half minutes before, and it's about one minute and five seconds. It's a little bit less in tokens, but it is definitely a little bit faster. Let's wait for the AMD to finish as well. So the second one is complete, and it actually turned out to be 14 tokens per second, and the total time was actually longer than the previous run, which is very curious. And again, this is one of those situations where you might run it over and over, and you'll get slightly different results with slightly different performance. Uh, which is where my tool that I've created comes in. This is the tool, and it's basically just an AI te test bench. Uh, it has some presets already built in, which I'm going to refresh. So by default, it just loads like this. I can ping both machines and get their stats, their metrics. Uh, I can actually load the models. So again, as I mentioned, all the models are the same. So I can actually just go and select all 13 models I want if I wanted and run the test on them. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do just like two or three so we'll do Llama 3 with 8 billion parameters. We'll do Quen 2 with 7 billion. And let's just throw in Quen 3 with 30 billion, which is a very big model. Let's run it five times each. And I'm going to put in my prompts. For the prompts, I can actually do multiple in this example. So for prompt 1, I'm going to select a, something quite short. For prompt 2, I'm going to have something a little bit larger. And for prompt three, let's do maybe a programming one. 
So we'll do a little Python snippet. And we can do a number of problem four if we really want to. But the idea behind this is ability to run it and run it multiple times. I don't really look at the results in terms of what text it outputs or how accurate it is. That's not what this is for. This is more, mostly to get metrics out of the cars of how they perform in terms of tokens or power consumption and speed as well, such as delays in between runs. So this is just running and going like crazy. So we've got, we got run, run one through three. In this case, I'm running it five times for each uh, query. And it will run on every different model and it will run in every different possibility. So this is gonna run for a little while. As you can see, it's filling in all the details. While it's running, I can quickly show you what the metrics mean. Um, so we've got the prompt tokens. So this is the actual tokens required for the prompt. We have the generated tokens. We have the time to first token. That's the time it takes to load up the model. The bigger the model, the longer it takes. As you can see here, so the first model is 8 billion parameters. So it took around four seconds. While if we look at the Quen, it took 10 seconds. So it's much longer and it makes sense. Then we've got our prompt evaluation, generation time, and total time. Also, we have our tokens per second, which is the metric that most people refer to. But the interesting factor here is gonna be power consumption. So we have average power over the run, and then I've also created the calculations, which looks at the energy during generation. It's not gonna be 100% accurate, but it will give us a good parameter because these two particular cards have completely different TDPs. The AMD card is 250 watts or 200 watt TDP, while the NVIDIA card can run up to 350 watts. So it's vastly different. So just because one card might have half the token speed, it doesn't necessarily mean it's half as fast because it actually might consume half the power. So we'll look into the actual deals in a bit. I'll just let it run and we'll have a look at the charts in a bit. So we also got charts and then I have ability to sort things. Once it's done, we can review it all together. And it's complete. So in log, it just goes, you know, it, the, the tests were completed. And these are all the results. And we can look granularly into them, but that's no fun. So let's go further down and look at the graphs. Uh, let's start with the time for the endpoint model. And you can see larger models take a lot longer to load. And they did load a little bit faster on NVIDIA cards. Then we've got average generative tokens per second. AMD is performing about half the speed of NVIDIA in this example, which is, you know, it's kind of expected based on the results we looked at before. Then if we look further, we actually got average GPU utilization and AMD was actually being used a bit better than NVIDIA, which is kind of interesting, where AMD is really pushing to the max and getting the most out of the card while NVIDIA's card is not even being utilized up to 100%. But this is where it gets kind of funky. AMD card is maxing around around 200 to 210 watts. And NVIDIA card in these examples goes between 300 to 260 watts. Temperatures are different as well. NVIDIA card is also a little bit cooler. It's around 71 degrees while AMD card hits 95. And that's mostly because NVIDIA card is almost three slots and it's using three fans, while AMD card is a blower style card. So you're a bit more limited there. This next parameter with average VRAM used, I think I have an issue and the issue is actually mostly to do with AMD and how it flushes its memory. So I believe with NVIDIA, this is actually accurate. When it loads the model, it goes into the memory, kind of stays there. Uh, because none of these models used up the memory in full. While AMD card has not flushed its memory from the first runs and it's kind of sitting there. So this is all to do with the Rockham drivers and a bit of an inconsistency I have with running these tests. But power itself, so power on its own with the metrics doesn't mean anything. What's important here is the energy June generation. This is where we look at the actual efficiency in comparison to getting the tokens out. This is where for every run to complete, for an average of run to complete, uh, AMD in this example had to use up 391 while NVIDIA was at 280. So you can see the power efficiency here is actually in NVIDIA's court. Even though its power usage per run was actually higher in that moment, but because it completed the run faster, 
it's performing a little bit better. And you can see this here as well. So average power during generation, you know, these are the power metrics, and then the actual usage or how much power it took to complete the run is here. So ultimately, what we find out from this example is AMD card, at least this particular AMD card, may be using less power during the run. It's maxing out around 200 watts. But because it's performing at almost half the speed, it's actually ultimately going to be costing you more power to run queries. Which brings us to the conclusion. Ultimately, between these two particular cards, NVIDIA is clearly the winner. It is a card which has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It can do a lot. The one place where AMD would potentially win from time to time is the ability to utilize that additional VRAM. So if you have bigger models or if you want to have longer queries or you want to interact with your AI for longer. So what you'll see is if you have multiple uses of the same query or go deeper into, let's say, programming, like I did for my iterative design for the software, you need more VRAM to kind of carry on using it. So this is where maybe you'd use AMD card. But together with the Rockham issues I had, with basically the driver issues, it might be something that you think about twice. One other thing to consider with this server is it is a very beefy server which has expandability, but it is expensive. An alternative to this, while it might perform slightly worse, is the Ryzen AI 395. It's something that maybe more people are going to be able to afford to, for their own homes to run at models at reasonable speeds. But what you get with Ryzen AI is ability to have 128 gigabytes of memory, which is shared between GPU and, and CPU, which can be utilized to run bigger models. So that's something to consider. I've reached out to AMD to see if maybe we can test some of it out and we'll see how it goes. In the next video, I wanna explore other alternative use cases for AI. One of the items I have to test is ability to control my home automation via home assistant. So connecting Olama to my home assistant to finally get rid of Google from my home. I know that Google Home in the future will be using Gemini, but hey, I want to have my own data in my own household and have control over it. What do you think we should use this server for and test out next? Let us know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one.